Hello, in this video, I'll be introducing you to uncertainties and how we can calculate them and how we can combine them. To start with, if we have a range of values, the absolute uncertainty is calculated by dividing the range by two. For example, if we took a series of measurements of length and received the values 57.0 millimetres, 55.0 millimetres, 54.0 millimetres and 56.0 millimetres. In order to estimate the true value, we would find the mean. So we would add up 57, 55, 54 and 56, divide by 4, and that would give us a mean of 55.5 millimetres. But what's the uncertainty in that? Well, of course, we need to find out the range of these values. So the largest value we have is 57.0. And the smallest value we have is 54.0. So that gives us a range of 3 millimetres. And as shown above, in order to calculate the absolute uncertainty, we divide the range by 2. So the absolute uncertainty is equal to 3.0 divided by 2, which is of course 1.5 millimetres. So if we wish to correctly give our best estimate for this value, we would say that the mean is equal to 55.5 plus or minus 1.5 millimetres, and that demonstrates the absolute uncertainty in our values. What about percentage uncertainty? Well, percentage uncertainty is always calculated in the same way. That is, we take the absolute uncertainty, we divide it by the value, in this case it's the mean, and we multiply by 100. So that will give us, in this case, 1.5 divided by 55.5 multiplied by 100, which is 2.7%. So that's if we have a range of values, this is how we find the absolute uncertainty and the percentage uncertainty. What if we take several repeat readings and get exactly the same measurement each time? Is it correct to say that the error is zero? Well, no. If this happens, or if we just take a, a single value without any repeats, we use a different process. We use the resolution of the measuring equipment we're using. By resolution, what I mean is, for example, a 30 centimeter ruler has increments of one millimeter. So we would say that the resolution of a 30 centimeter ruler is plus or minus one millimeter, or you can also write that as plus or minus 0.1 centimetres. So for example, if I'd measured something with my ruler and it was 15.6 centimetres, I would write it as 15.6 plus or minus 0.1 centimetres to reflect the uncertainty in the measurement because we can only measure to the nearest 0.1 centimetres or, or one millimetre. In a calculation, we may use several different quantities, each with different uncertainties. And in this case, we need to combine those uncertainties together to work out the total uncertainty in the problem. To do this, there are three rules we need to be aware of. Number one, adding or subtracting. If we are adding two values together, we must add together their absolute uncertainties. Number two, multiplying or dividing. If we multiply or divide two quantities together, in this instance, we must add the percentage uncertainties. And finally, number three, powers. If we're raising a quantity to, to a power, for example, squaring or cubing it, the rule is that for x to the power of n, we multiply the percentage uncertainty by n. Let me show you what I mean by applying each of these rules to a single example. Calculating Young Modulus. Young
you may already know that E, the Young modulus, is equal to stress divided by strain, which can be simplified to F, the force, multiplied by the original length, divided by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the extension. Now, don't worry if you haven't already studied this part of the course. This is just an example to show you how to work out the total uncertainty in this value E, the Young modulus. So let's say we've done our experiment and we've got the following data. We know the original length of the wire is 28.9 centimetres plus or minus 0 0.1 centimetres. That's because I measured the wire using a ruler and the ruler measured to the nearest millimetre or 0 0.1 centimetres. The final length of the wire I measured with the same ruler to be 31.3 centimetres plus or minus again 0 0.1 centimetre because that is the resolution of the ruler. I used a micrometer to work out the diameter D of the wire which came out as 0 0.28 millimetres plus or minus 0 0.01 millimetres. This is the resolution of the micrometer. It can measure to the nearest one hundredth of a millimetre. And finally, the force applied to the wire was 8.0 newtons plus or minus 0 0.1 newtons, because that was the resolution of the newton metre that I was using. So the first thing we'd need to do here is to work out what the extension of the wire is. To do this, we would subtract the original length from the final length which would give us 31.3 take away 28.9 or 2.4 centimetres. So that's our x, our extension of the wire is 2.4 centimetres. Now because we were adding or subtracting we apply rule number one here which is that we must add the absolute uncertainty. So this, now this is very straightforward. Our uncertainty for each one was 0 0.1. So the uncertainty equals 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, which gives us 0 0.2. So x should correctly be written as 2.4 plus or minus 0 0.2 centimetres. We should work out the percentage uncertainty of this value as well. So the percentage uncertainty is going to be equal to the absolute uncertainty, which is 0 0.2, divided by the value, which is 2.4, multiplied by 100. That will give us a percentage uncertainty of 8.3%. Next, we should work out the cross-sectional area of the wire, which is, of course, pi r squared. Well, since we have the diameter here, we would write that instead as pi d squared divided by 4. Now, pi and 4 have no uncertainties attached to them because they are known values. The d, however, is squared, which means we need to apply rule 3 here, that for powers, we multiply the percentage uncertainty by that power. First of all, let's... Uh, Plug in our values here to work out the area. So pi multiplied by d squared, d 0 0.28 times 10 to the minus 3. Square that and divide by 4. Our area comes out as 6.16 .6 times 10 to the minus 8 metres squared. Note that I've converted millimetres into metres here because we need to be using SI units in our final calculation. We know that the percentage uncertainty in D is going to be equal to 0 0.01, so that's the absolute uncertainty in D, from the resolution of the micrometer, divided by 0 0.28 times 100 gives a percentage uncertainty of 3.6%. So if that's the percentage uncertainty in D, we've squared D to work out A, so we need to multiply 
the percentage uncertainty by two. So the percentage uncertainty in A is equal to 3.6 times two, which is 7.2%. We can then work backwards to find the absolute uncertainty which is going to be the percentage uncertainty divided by 100 multiplied by the value. So that's 7.2 divided by 100 multiplied by 6.16 times 10 to the minus 8 which gives us an absolute uncertainty of 4.44 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared. So we can write our area as 6.16 times 10 to the minus 8 plus or minus 4.44 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared. Before we combine all these values together we need to know the percentage uncertainties in the force and the length so that so the percentage uncertainty in the force is equal to 0 0.1 divided by 8.0 times 100 which gives us 1.25 percent and the percentage uncertainty in the original length L is equal to 0 0.1 which was the absolute uncertainty in the measurement of the original length divided by 28.9 times 100 which gives us 0 0.35 percent. So finally we can combine all of these together in our final calculation to work out the Young modulus E. So E is 8.0 times 28.9 times 10 to the power of minus 2, because that was, length was in centimetres, divided by 6.16 times 10 to the minus 8, which is our area uh, multiplied by the extension which was 2.4 centimetres so 2.4 times 10 to the minus 2 and that gives us an answer of 1.56 times 10 to the power of 9 pascals but what's the uncertainty in all of this? Well, the uncertainty on the, in the force was 1.25%. The uncertainty in the original length was 0.35%. The uncertainty in the area was 7.2%. And the uncertainty in the extension was 8.3%. So here we refer to rule number two, which is that if we are multiplying or dividing, then we simply add the percentage uncertainties. So the percentage uncertainty in E is equal to 1.25 plus 0 0.35 plus 7.2 plus 8.3 gives a total percentage uncertainty of 17.1% in our final value of E. We should then convert that back into an absolute uncertainty. So in order to do that, we divide 17.1 by 100 and multiply it by the final value of E, which was 1.56 times 10 to the power of nine. It gives an absolute uncertainty of 2.67 times 10 to the power of 8 pascals.
So therefore, we can finally write our value of E incorporating the uncertainty as E equals 1.56 times 10 to the power of 9 plus or minus 2.67 times 10 to the power of 8 pascals. So there we have our rules for how we work out uncertainty for a range of values, for a single value, and how we combine uncertainties. If you found this video to be helpful, please like it or click on the screen now to subscribe or visit cowanphysics.com.